thanks for watching TechTube. My name is Daryl, and today I'd like to discuss how capacitance is being affected by DC bias in class II ceramic capacitors. I will begin by demonstrating the impact a DC bias voltage has on a given multi-layer ceramic capacitor. Next, I will explain why this phenomenon occurs and follow up with how to utilize this information to improve your future circuit designs. Let's get started. Hi, we're inside the lab and the purpose of coming here is to demonstrate the DC bias effect. I've already chosen a 3216 X7R 1 microfarad capacitor with a rated voltage of 25 volts and have connected it to an LCR meter. And we're going to observe what happens when we apply the rated voltage. Right now the display is showing 1 microfarad which is our nominal capacitance reading. And this is with 0 volts being applied. Let's go ahead and apply the 25 volts. We now have more than a 40% drop in capacitance from our nominal capacitance readings. This clearly tells us that class II ceramic capacitors, when there is a DC voltage being applied, the capacitance is clearly affected. The dielectric material in class II ceramic capacitors is derived from barium titanate. Here's what a barium titanate molecule looks like. Notice the titanium ion in the center. Barium titanate molecular structure is cubic shape above the Curie point and changes to a tetragonal shape below the Curie point. But notice the titanium ion shifting off center when the structure is tetragonal shape. This causes one of the axes to be more positive than the other. The axis that the titanium ion shift is random. The polarity that has been created because of the titanium ion shifting off center is referred to as a dipole, which one axis being more positive than the other and one axis being more negative than the other. Here's the animation showing dipoles in class II ceramic capacitors. Without a DC voltage being applied, an electric field is not present and the dipoles will arrange themselves randomly throughout the crystal structure, and this is referred to as spontaneous polarization. During spontaneous polarization, the dielectric constant is high, which yields high capacitance. As a low DC voltage is applied, the electric field affects some of the dipoles due to polarization. The dipoles will start to align themselves parallel to the electric field. This alignment of dipoles with the electric field decreases capacitance. As more DC voltage is applied, more dipoles will begin to align themselves parallel with the electric field and capacitance continually decreases. With the rated voltage being applied to the capacitor, capacitance levels can drop as much as 70% from their nominal capacitance. Since we can't stop DC bias from affecting capacitance in class II ceramic capacitors, Let's learn how to embrace it. Here's a chart that I will use to compare several DC bias curves of class II capacitors. The light blue curve represents a capacitor of 1 nanofarad. Notice just at 10 volts the capacitance decreases close to 9%. With the rated voltages of 16 volts being applied, the capacitance level drops 21%. This change in capacitance might be unacceptable in your design. The red curve represents the same capacitor but with a higher rated voltage of 25 volts. Notice that 10 volts to capacitance change has a decrease of only 2%. This is because the dielectric layers will be thicker in higher rated voltage ceramic capacitors. A thicker dielectric means the electric field is weaker which affects less dipoles. The purple curve represents a 470 picofarad capacitor in the same case size. At 10 volts, the capacitance change is only 0.6%. If your design will permit adding two of these capacitors in parallel, this could be a possible solution to the DC bias effect. Lower capacitance values in ceramic capacitors have thicker dielectric layers. Sometimes the same capacitance value is offered in a larger case size. This also would have a better DC bias performance due to thicker dielectric layers. Yes, while it is true class II multilayer ceramic capacitors have achieved high capacitance, it is important to understand that there are some inherent characteristics to consider when you use them in your circuit designs. 
We recommend that you check the DC bias curve of the capacitor under consideration beforehand to determine if the operating voltage capacitance is acceptable. If it isn't, you can minimize capacitance loss by one of the following ways. One, you can place two or more capacitors in parallel with each other using lower capacitive values. Or two, you can choose a capacitor with a higher rated voltage. Or three, you can select a larger case size. All three of these methods will give you thicker dielectric layers, which will help minimize capacitance loss due to DC bias. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for future videos.